just waiting for takeoff now at Gatwick. I'm on my EasyJet flight to Porto to then hire a car and drive up to um, Entrima, which is very close to Arnde. And um, meeting with the Mr. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome on board this EasyJet flight shortly departing to Porto. Once you've found your allocated seal, please only Been place any large bags, three bags, and lockers, and a good Just landed in Porto, on my way now to go through passport control, and then I've got to go and find my higher car place. But so far, so good. Right, I'm in the higher car, I am on the way to my hotel in Galicia. I'm still in Portugal, I've been driving for about 20 minutes, I'm starting to get the hang of the road positioning. And now I understand why my Italian husband's driving in the UK is so bad. Because the road positioning is the thing. I keep going on to the vibrating line at the side where I'm not used to being this side of the road even though I'm in a motorway and there are three lanes I'm used to being on the other side of the car so I'm getting the hang of that I have to keep checking my mirrors to check that the line is a good distance I'm getting the hang of it it's a nice little car it's a, an Opel Corsa and um, looks quite new it's, raining a little bit, drizzling a little bit, um, but it's okay. I've worked out how to use the wipers. I haven't worked out how to use the headlights yet. So, um, yeah, but at the moment I don't need them. It's okay. Um, and I'm getting the hang of being on this side and the gears aren't too bad. So, so far so good. I'm on this motorway now for about 40 miles. So, that should be nice and quite comfortable just to keep going there's not a lot of traffic um, you know it's um, it's okay and it was all quite plain sailing straight through passport control they didn't ask me for my locator form they didn't ask me for any covid information they didn't ask me for my boarding pass they just looked at my passport checked it with me stamped it and that was it really quick and efficient Friendly. They put a strange blue band on everybody, on everyone's wrist as, as um, we came out of the plane. Um, I'm not quite sure what that was for, but anyway. And then the um, OK Mobility van, it was supposed to be a black van, but actually it was white, but I recognised the writing and the logo, so um, that was really easy. Jumped in five minutes up the road to the car hire place quite straightforward they made me pay an extra 50 euros for uh, crossing the border 10 euros a day and an extra nine euros something for the electronic toll um, payment system in Portugal um, so I paid that because then it means you don't have to stop and mess around it doesn't work in Spain but I'm not going to go on any toll roads in Spain that I'm aware of so need in Portugal for my journey there and back so I've probably played more than what I need to play but it's just easier knowing that that's done with so yeah the cars cost me more than what um, I expected but that's because I'm crossing the border but then when I add that to what I've paid it's actually working out exactly the same as the car price from Santiago where I was originally supposed to be flying to so it's worked out even, so that's not bad. Full tank of petrol, so I've just got to return it with a full tank. We did an inventory of the car, making sure there's no damage, there's a few scratches, and he noted those. Um, and that's, you know, that's pretty much it. They take a whopping great big deposit on your credit card in case you um, have any accidents and there's any damage to the car. Or you can buy their really expensive insurance and still pay a deposit. So I was like, no, I'm only here for five days. I'm not 
roads are incredibly windy, as you can see, because we're up in the mountains. We're going up and up and up and up and up. And this reminds me of my Camino, especially corners like this, where I was walking up this big, long hill for hours. And every corner I went round, I thought, oh, this must be it, we must be at the top. And then you go around the corner and there's more slope and it carries on and it did it went on for blinking hours so when i got to the top it was really quite emotional i cheered myself i did actually shed a few tears because it was uh, it was quite a journey but that was a great moment and these hills just like that so similar this landscape the roads and everything similar to Galicia which you'd expect because it's right next door um, but yeah it's, it really is beautiful to drive through even with the rain so I'm about I reckon half an hour to my um, hotel still in Portugal, I haven't crossed the border yet, once I cross the border it's really not very far, um, probably about 20 kilometres, maybe 25, Paradamonte is where I am now, now one thing I'm finding tricky to work out is what the speed limit is, I've got kilometres on my car obviously, and um, there are some road signs, but there are some that look like our national speed limit sign, and I don't know what that is for the road. So when I get to my hotel, I'm going to do some uh, research on Portuguese roads, the laws of the road, and driving is pretty self-explanatory. It's fairly obvious, most of it, but really should have checked before I left what the walls of the road are. But what I love about this, the driving through here, there are so many little lay-bys that they put there for drivers because it's just such a beautiful landscape and um, you know they appreciate that people want to pull over and stop. There's loads of little really generous lay-bys. You can get a good five, six, seven cars in. Maybe it's for truckers as well. I've heard that Europe is much better if you're a, a haulage driver. They provide lots of places for you. Hairpin bend into 100 metres. Um, so yeah, I'm taking it steady on these mountain roads because I really don't fancy going over the side of the mountain. But just look at that. I mean, you really can't tell on the phone, but those hills, mountains, are just beautiful. The colours and the, just the mist, absolutely stunning. The little house, I love the little house, it's sort of perched in the middle of nowhere on the side of the mountain. Just fantastic. Okay, I am now apparently in Spain this is the little border control hut nobody there if you look in the, the sign at the side of the road I am now in 2.8 miles here. turn left onto OU 1207 
that's where that little village is, sort of half buried under the water. Yeah, this is that lake. I'm going to have to come down here and have a look at that because that we've seen that on YouTube and that just looks amazing. It's, uh, it's a village, abandoned village that basically... In one mile, turn right onto OU 1208. Oh, look at that bed. Lovely. Dark oak. Nice little lamp. Cute little chairs. Nice and warm in here. The radiator on. Oh, that's nice. Bathroom. Nice and clean. Oh, they've got a bath. Lovely. Nice. Perfect. That's all I need. Desk so I can sit and do some writing. A little picture of a Spanish soldier that every hotel room needs. And this is the view. Ooh. Yeah, this is the view of the town. That's okay. Bit of wasteland next door. Oh, some nice oranges. Look at that. Nice little orange tree, might have to do a bit of orange scrumping. So, I'm at my hotel, just arrived, really lovely lady, much later than I planned. It's gone four o'clock and I told her by email that I'd be here between, I think, two and three. But my maps took me to um, Entremo, even though this is Entremo, Entremo is a big region it's like a council and there are lots of little villages within that region um but so i came to the junction turned left following my maps and actually it was just down the road on the right so i drove for about 10 minutes and realized hang on but i'm here now really nice little room um got all the shuts on the blinds so i can have a siesta if i want i just asked her where is a good place to have dinner she told me it's a nice place just down on the right hand side most places are closed for siesta now and they don't open until, I don't know, nine o'clock or whatever. So um, they eat late here. <laughs> so I might see if I can go and find a supermarket or something and get myself something to eat because I literally have had nothing to eat today but a small little dark chocolate bar on the, um, on the airplane. I'm not actually that hungry to be fair but I should eat. I have got a bit of a stinking headache. Flying does um, dehydrate you and I've been up since half five and I didn't sleep very well last night. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm going to sleep well tonight. But yeah, lovely little room. Nice, lovely lady. They serve breakfast down in the salon. Um, yeah, so we'll see.